Usually your underwriting will give you a rule of thumb. However, many times I find that the rule of thumb has not been updated as the market changes. So I can name a few of the items that new investors need to be aware of changing rapidly, especially in the past two to three years. One would be insurance. That's like our, yeah. our big one. It's the first thing that we're always thinking about because it always seemed to come in higher than we had planned. So, you know, we had to really start being aggressive with our insurance number. So this is a big one. Insurance has gone up every year since I started in, in, in the business in 2007. Um, side note, we will do a podcast on insurance and I can invite Nico, who is our insurance broker for 14 years. But over the past couple of years, insurance has gotten out of hand. For example, when I started as a student with Dave Lindahl in 2007, our rule of thumb for insurance was $250 a door. I don't know well. if you can believe that. <laughs> um, and that would be now, nice. Right. We're now underwriting our deals between like 1100 and 1500 a door, depending on the closer to the Gulf of Mexico or the East Coast, typically the higher the insurance because it is higher risk. Insurance is based on square footage of the units, not how many units. So our rule of thumb always does how many units, but it's actually based on square footage. So be aware of your area. And if you're buying a, prop a property with very large units, the cost will be higher because of the cost to rebuild. Also, you want to do a loss run runs on the property, which is a history of the losses of the property. Any recent losses typically in the last five years will affect the insurance, especially if it was a big loss or weather related. Then you have taxes. Taxes are another item that you need to be aware of. You must know when or how often the state you are buying in reassesses. If they reassess on the sale, make sure you figure in the rate based on the sales price and your underwriting to reflect the increase by year two and adjust your underwriting depending on when the state reassesses. We've only been in three markets, North Carolina, we stayed there for many, many years, um, then South Carolina, and then Texas. North Carolina was my favorite. We never dealt with reassessment on the sale. So I didn't even, I didn't really get used to that. We've been investing there basically our entire career. They reassess every six to eight years. So it was awesome. We could buy a property. One time we bought a property, they had already just reassessed and the entire time we owned it, never taxes never went up can you imagine that um so and it would depend on the county whether it's six or eight years south carolina and texas though reassess at the sale so the first time i bought a south carolina property and we did plan for it but when i found out how much it was going up i was like i don't even know if i you know you've got to make sure that you're prepared for that so that's one of the things that i'm looking for um, after the purchase, the property be prepared for a big increase. And side note, make sure you're protesting the tax reassessment if it increases enough to pay the cost to protest. We're in Texas and South Carolina, we're protesting every year. Then there's payroll. Payroll is another one that really went up over the past few years. The pandemic caused a shortage of workers and the demand for them skyrocketed. And as you know, supply and demand. So the cost of good employees went way up. We used to figure in about $800 a unit, and now we're figuring what went about $1,400. Yeah, I mean, fourteen dollars would be ideal. We're still seeing properties that are paying over that, though. So, I mean, market, yeah. it could, I think that comes down to, you know, rents as well, right? People need to be able to pay their, their mortgage. They need to be able to pay their bills. So, you know, a lot of it's just inflation. Everything's going up rent, payroll, expenses, income. But this is another mar another thing that's market specific. So your management company will let you know what the salaries would be for your area. It's, it's very, it depends on your area. You want good employees though. So if your payroll is too low, you'll end up with people that don't know what they're doing and you could lose money. Staff and management is crucial to success in this business. So don't cheap out on payroll, trust me. Bad employees or bad management will put you in a hole and it's very hard to dig out, out once you're there. Unfortunately, I have to admit that I know this from experience. <laughs> Um, and then and, uh, there's also reserves. So make sure that you have adequate reserves. We say 250 a door and that's likely your lender requirement. So keep that in there. But I personally also wanna see, this is me as a sponsor. I also wanna see that you maybe have, depending on the age of the deal and how much deferred maintenance I think that it has, another maybe 500 to $1,000 a unit put away. 